Hi, this is Dan Brunton with the Intel Corporation. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing Intel Endpoint Management Assistant troubleshooting and wrapping up this series of videos. So there's a few things you wanna keep in mind when you're looking at troubleshooting with Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. First, if you're familiar with our other tools for activating Intel AMT, for instance, you know that logging typically with our older tools was done on the client side when you're activating AMT on a particular device. With Intel Endpoint Management Assistant, all the logging is done at a server level. So that means even for tenants, if you want to be able to go through for tenant A and understand what's happening with provisioning on tenant A's computers, you want to look at the server level logging itself that crosses all tenants. Uh, unfortunately, at this time, we don't have tenant level logging available within Emma. That is something that we're looking at for a future release. So another common question we get is around audit logging, being able to know who's doing what inside of uh, Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. So we do provide audit logging capabilities inside of Emma, inside the database itself. We don't expose those through any kind of reports or user interface at this time, but it is something that you can query from the database directly yourself. We do have support uh, to a certain degree for Intel Active Management Technology audit logging, but something to keep in mind there if you want to look at endpoint uh, audit logging for Intel AMT is that Emma uses a, uh, a standard user across all AMT devices when it's going through and issuing commands. So if, again, you think about the who, what, and when that makes up audit logging the who portion for AMT audit logging specifically will always show that standard Emma user, and you'll have to correlate that back to whoever logged into the Emma server at the time. Uh, there are still some limitations to uh, how audit logging works, uh, and we are looking at expanding it in future versions of uh, Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. So one of the key tools you're going to use to be able to keep track of what's happening in your Intel Endpoint Management Assistant environment is the Intel Endpoint Management Assistant Platform Manager. So the Platform Manager is a tool that lets you do a few different things. It lets you check on the status of the various components that make up the Intel Emma solution. Uh, it lets you monitor events for each of those components. So, for instance, monitoring the configuration of active management technology. And it does let you make a few configuration changes. So let's take into a little more detail. What can I do with the Emma Platform Manager? The answer is you can break things, so do be careful. Uh, there are a number of configuration items that get exposed as part of the default website option. Again, uh, we don't recommend changing any of those uh, unless you know precisely what you're doing. Uh, the one exception I would make here is if you're looking to do something with your environment is uh, uh, the name to value that you'll see in there. That's the host name of your Intel Emma instance by default, uh, but you can change that text. Uh, for instance, in most of my environments that I use for non-production use for demos, I'll change that from the, uh, the Emma host name uh, to uh, a string of text that says like not for production use. Uh, next component you'll see in there is the Emma Manageability Server, and typically you're going to use that to monitor AMT configurations. You can do that from a couple places. There's the Application tab that'll show you uh, the status of 20 computers it's provisioning at any one time if you have that many going. That can be a little fast to kind of watch what's going on, so you'll probably spend most of your time in that, uh, that second tab, uh, the Events tab that has more detailed information and uh, scrolling by in kind of classic log format. Uh, the other two components you see listed here are the Emma Swarm Server and Ajax Server. You'll probably spend a little less time looking at those, but I wanted to talk about what they are anyway. So uh, the Swarm Server is uh, going to give you the ability to monitor the software agents and Sierra connections back to your Intel Endpoint Management Assistant instance. It's also where the, you'll see logging uh, information for power state polling from, uh, uh, from the Intel Emma Server to the devices you have out. Then we have the Emma Ajax Server. And you're basically going to use that, especially if you're a developer, if you want to be able to go through and monitor WebSocket connections to your environment. So we talked about logging in the Emma Platform Manager. Well, those logs also exist as text files with a, a daily rotation uh, on the uh, uh, file system of the server that you install your Intel Endpoint Management Assistant on. And those get located in the C, Program Files, x86, Intel Platform Manager, Emma Logs Directory. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out, too, is we don't have built-in log trimming right now for Intel Endpoint Management Assistant, so you'll need to go through and uh, implement your own tools for purging those logs out uh, as you see fit that best match your, uh, your business needs. I'd like to give you a few examples of some common messages that you may run into in the uh, Emma Manageability Server log. And some of these may not have a, a great explanation in the message, so I wanted to kind of translate those into something a little more meaningful. So let's start out with this first entry here. Warning, host-based admin setup failed with an auth failed uh, a message. You'll see the host name and the GUID for that host. That typically means that if you're doing admin control mode provisioning or certificate-based provisioning uh, in Emma terms, uh, 
that the uh, the DNS suffix that's on that PKI provisioning certificate did not match with uh, DHCP option 15, or if you set a, uh, a provisioning certificate uh, DNS suffix in the MEBX, that those two didn't match. So that's this a common uh, problem that you can run into there is that, that mismatch that you'll need to address somehow. Next, you'll see this uh, slightly more wordy message about a, a, a WSMAN exception, the Intel Manageability WSMAN Management WSMAN exception message, where I'll say the underlying connection was closed, the connection was closed unexpectedly. You can see that pop up in cases where the Intel EMA agent is trying to start provisioning active management technology before the Intel management engine and AMT driver stack have fully initialized in the operating system. So in a case where you bring the system up, the EMA agent starts and it's going to want to try configuring AMT right away. So it'll resolve itself once the driver stack is loaded and Intel's uh, endpoint management assistant agent is able to talk to it and configure AMT. The third example I wanted to share is the message warning expired phase two record. You'll see that occur if you make a change to an AMT profile that's already been used to configure devices that you're managing. So imagine a scenario where you want to add in an additional wireless network to your AMT configuration profile. When that happens, the Intel Emma server will realize that, oh, that profile's changed, and I know all the computers that use that profile. Therefore, I'm going to go through and reapply the second phase of AMT provisioning to those devices so they pick up the changes to the profile, such as adding or removing Wi-Fi networks. Let's take a moment to talk about the Intel Emma agent. Once you've installed it on a client, you can pick up some diagnostic information by going to the agent webpage at http colon slash slash localhost 16990. With that, you'll see uh, what's uh, on the slide here. Well, you get some basic information about the host name, and really the most important thing to look for there is that green check mark. That lets you know that the agent has been able to connect to your Intel Endpoint Management Assistant server on the back end. We also stamped some information in the registry and the keys listed here if you want to be able to look that up. And finally, if you need to look at some logging information, there is some basic logging that is provided, and that is found in the uh, program files, x86, if you're doing a 32-bit install, Intel, Emma Agent, emmaagent.txt file. One other thing I'd like to mention is if you need to accelerate the process of AMT configuration, say for debugging purposes, things like that, uh, you can go through and... Uh, restart the uh, EMA agent to kick off the auto-provisioning process again. So basically what happens is if you manually unconfigure AMT, you want to reprovision it, just restart that service and the process starts all over again. Next, I'd like to talk about debugging and working with Intel Endpoint Management Assistant and CIRA or Client Initiated Remote Access. There's a few key things to keep in mind. First, if you want to see what's going on and see if that CIRA or Fast Call for Help connection is established, you're going to need to have the Intel Management and Security Status application installed on your system. From there, in the Intel AMT tab, as you can see in the screenshot, we have Fast Call for Help listed. So with that green light, I can see that my Intel AMT uh, device has a connection back to my Intel Endpoint Management Assistant server on the back end, and it's fully functional. Next, let's talk about using Wi-Fi in Sierra. Uh, there can be some cases where there is a delay between the OS shutdown and uh, AMT taking over the wireless card and reestablishing a SIRA connection. So uh, again, we've talked about this briefly in the past. The way wireless cards are architected is either the operating system gets to own it or the active management technology capabilities of uh, the vPro platform get to own it. So when the operating system shuts down, there will be a delay uh, before AMT takes over the wireless interface and reestablishes that SIRA connection. So just bear that in mind that uh, one or the other has to own the NIC, and there can be a delay in the process of handing it off from one to the other. And lastly, if you are, again, working with a, an environment that has web proxy servers uh, versus transparent proxy servers, and you want to use uh, uh, client-initiated remote access, CIRA, you'll need to have version AMT12 or higher to be able to support CIRA working from behind uh, web proxies. We've talked about a lot in these videos, so let's go ahead and wrap up a few key concepts. First, with Intel EMA version 1.3.2, the version that we're releasing at the same time that I'm creating these videos, uh, remember it has the option of creating a random MEBX password when you do uh, certificate-based provisioning. So if you choose that option, uh, those random passwords will be uh, added into the Intel EMA database, and you can use an API to look those up. So just remember, they are randomized by default. Next, uh, the Intel EMA installer expects Intel Endpoint Management Assistant to be the only thing hosted on a web server. Uh, right now, it is uh, 
not play well with others as a version 1.3.2. So if you have something else installed and you begin the Emma installation, it will remove anything in the default website and replace it with Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. So keep that in mind. Another thing, too, is we talked about, you know, like that uh, phase two uh, uh, record expiration log entry that you'll get with uh, AMT configurations so that if you change your Intel AMT configuration for your devices, you're managing that it'll push those changes out. Unfortunately, at this time, uh, we don't offer that same level of flexibility for changing the in-band agent capabilities. So, for instance, if you wanted to turn off user consent for the KVM remote control after you turned it on, we can't change that option dynamically just yet. So you'd have to push out a new agent configuration file and reinstall the Emma agent to have it pick up those kind of changes. For those of you using Intel Active Management Technology, something else to consider is that when Intel Endpoint Management Assistant does uh, unprovisions, it will do a full AMT unprovision, not a partial. Depending on the version of AMT firmware, uh, Emma will clear custom DNS, uh, TLS, PKI suffixes, or uh, custom provisioning cert hashes. It'll go through and remove all those when it does an unprovision. Uh, something else that comes up as a question once in a while is uh, endpoints. You know, we talked about all those different endpoint groups and how you can use those to logically uh, group together the devices you're managing. Of course, there can be cases where, uh, say, a person moves jobs from one department to another, and you may want to move that device to match up uh, with, uh, with the change in their status. Again, today we don't support the ability to dynamically move clients between these different endpoint groups. So what you'll have to do then is uh, reinstall the EMMA agent, apply that new uh, configuration policy, and that'll handle the movement of the group there at this time. Next thing I want to have you take in consideration is as of the release of these videos related to EMMA version 1.3.2, we don't have high availability support in EMMA at this time. So related to high availability, something else I want to make sure we talk about is disaster recovery. So this is something that all IT practitioners have to deal with in one way or another. As of version 1.3.2, again, the version that's released as of the time of the creation of these videos, uh, you'll need to go through and uh, basically do VM snapshots and database backups to be able to have a disaster recovery in place. Well, this concludes the video series. Thank you for watching. If you have any more questions about this, please come find us at intel.com vpro.